Okay, so we're supposed to graph uh, the solution to the system of linear inequalities. So I've got them here. Um, so if we're graphing it, I guess the first thing we could do is graph each equation. Okay, so uh, inequality, I should say, because they're inequality symbols. So graph each inequality. Um, so you can start by pretending that it's an equal symbol and graph it like a plain old line. Okay, and the way I graph lines is I like to put them in slope-intercept form. So I'd add y to both sides. And then I'd subtract 3 from both sides. And there we go. Now we've got it in slope-intercept form. That top one is the same thing as 4x minus 3 equals y. Okay, and So that means negative 3 is my y-intercept, so I can put a dot on there in, uh, in my math lab. Oh, it doesn't do. Let me do that. Okay. So I'd put a dot there in my math lab and then I'd count up one, two, three, four into the right one and put a dot. And then I'd use that line tool to draw a line. And this one is a solid line because it has the or equal to symbol right here. Okay. And then we can do the same thing for this other one. Treat it as if it was an equation. Uh, let's uh, this one's actually easier to graph using the intercepts, okay? Which is really quick. You just plug in a zero in for x, which knocks out this term because four times zero is zero. And then if you solve for y, you get y equals eight. Uh, sorry, you get y equals four. So that means the first dot I'd put in my math lab is up here at zero in the x, four in the y. And then do the same thing except plug in zero in for y. If you plug in a zero in for y, you get four x equals eight. But if you solve that equation, that gets x equals 2. So 2 is the x-intercept. And this one, make sure you use the dotted line tool in Desmos. Uh, not Desmos, in my math lab. should look like that. Okay. Now, it's important to note you don't have to graph exactly where they cross. For my math lab, you just have to graph the lines, and it will take care of where they cross. The, the last part we have to do, though, is we have to find out whether we shade this pizza slice or the whether we shade this pizza slice or this pizza slice. And you do that by just picking a test point that's in one of those four sections. Like this point right here, this blue dot is clearly within this pizza slice and not in any other ones, right? It's at 0, 1. So if I plug in 0 in for x and 1 in for y in this top inequality, I get 0 minus 1 is less than or equal to 3. Is that a true statement? Yes, right? Because negative 1 is less than 3. So that's true. So it works for this one. Let's see if it works for this bottom one because it's got to work for both. So if I plug in a 0 in for x and a 1 in for y, that's a false statement because this is going to be 2 and 2 is not greater than 8. So I picked a test point. It didn't work, so that means I'm not going to shade this area. Uh, let's try this area. Let's find a point that's clearly in this area. Let's go 1, comma, negative 2. So 1 on the x, negative 2 in for y. That definitely is going to land in this pizza slice. So if I plug in a 1 in for x and a negative 2 in for y, is that a true statement? Because look, it's minus a negative 2. This is 6, and 6 isn't less than 3. So this is not going to be the area we shade in, because we tested the point, didn't work for one of the inequalities. So how about 2, comma 1? That looks to be clearly within this pizza slice. If I plug in 2 in for x, and 1 in for y, 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 minus 2 is 6, but that's not less than or equal to 3. So I plugged in this point. It didn't work for the top inequality, so that's not it. So this is the last option. This is going to be my solution area, and I think it shows it right here. Right? Correct answer, yep, that area up there.